climate change, once thought of as a mere remote phenomenon, yet its impacts too dire to overlook. The threat of climate change is real. It is here. And it is happening too quickly for many species to adapt. Nations are crying. Zambia has not been spared. Indeed, we are facing the biggest environmental challenge of our time. Accelerated climate change is anticipated to have wide-ranging effects on the future sustainability of the Earth. This is all due to the adverse ecological, social and economic impacts. Therefore, climate change mitigation and adaptation is becoming increasingly important to the nations, Zambia included. In response to the effects of climate change, Zambia has embarked on a six-year pilot program for climate resilience, PPCR. The project objective is to strengthen the country's institutional framework for climate resilience and improve the adaptive capacity of vulnerable communities in the Barotse and the Kafue sub-basins. One of the two flagship projects under the pilot program for climate resilience is the strengthening climate resilience in the Kafue sub-basin, Skrika. Currently, uh, Skrika is implementing um, projects in 11 districts in three provinces, uh, uh, namely Lusaka, Southern and Central provinces. And um, um, the developmental project um, uh, objective is to improve uh, the capacity of um, uh, adaptive capacity of uh, vulnerable communities in the um, Kafue sub basin. Um, as you are aware, uh, the Kafue sub basin is a floodplain. During rainy season, uh, most of the areas get cut off um, from the other um, areas, thereby disrupting connectivity and the number of activities. At first, a risk and vulnerability study was done, which informed what kind of interventions should be made in the Kafue sub-basin. This season, it started raining in December instead of October. So it's, it fluctuates. Uh, and the, but the, the, the ending, we find it is always uh, end of March. So when it starts late, you find it, uh, the, 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 what, the, the crops become affected. And that is why we could see some animals, the grazing areas, uh, areas are dry in terms of water. And uh, for, for ATH stage specifically, if we were to do a, a bore here, it will even take you be, beyond 110, kilo, 110 meters down for you to find weight. Most of the areas where we sink boreholes, we find that they are dry boreholes. Unless otherwise, you are, you, you, you are just lucky. Problem just this so we no change the rain season. We we bridge as zula in Gabana tabasiko kushigolo. We tina we tiba janga kushigolo in Gabu we tia zula menda in Gabu tiba inki kumanga nda guabwa. Oh, you mu guabu guabu tani in Gabu. Kari we jana bu you mu you mu guabu sambala isishango yesu. Kari we unga we ti ima inza we jani ki hagade we tani in Gabu sambala. Kari we unga dependsi. Because climate change affects many aspects of the community lives, crops, water, infrastructure, and health, Skrika project is primarily community-driven. There are three components that are being implemented under the Strengthening Climate Resilience in the Kafue Sub-Basin project, Skrika. Under component one, we have community-driven um, adaptation um, projects 
whereby um, the communities themselves identified and came up with areas of um, interventions that are appropriate for their communities, which is uh, a bottom-up approach. And um, so there we are implementing various community projects which are bordering on provision of access to water uh, through solar-powered boreholes. Others would go for maybe goat rearing where we support them with improved goat ha uh, housing uh, structures uh, which go with the hand pump um, as well as the drinking trough um, and such um, interventions. Component two is looking at improving infrastructure to make it climate proof. This component includes a huge project of constructing a climate resilient road. It is a pilot project meant to see how rural feeder roads can be constructed in the face of climate change, especially in areas which are prone to floods, such as the Kafue sub-basin. Component three is project management and administration. This includes the project implementation unit, finance management, and procurement support. And so the road, uh, the stretch is um, a total of uh, about 240 kilometers. So the road um, stretches from Kalomo to uh, Itejteji via Dundumwezi, and it's got four links. Uh, link one runs from Kalomo um, to Dundumwezi Gate, the national park, Kafue National Park, and uh, link two runs from the Kafue National Park gate of Dundumwezi up to the Ngoma gate um, in Itejteji. And then link three runs from the Ngoma gate to Itejteji town, um, the CBD. And then link four runs from um, the Itejteji town up to the Namwala pontoon, but not crossing beyond uh, into Namwala. The Kafue sub-basin is basically a flood plain. When it gets flooded, it cuts off people from communities from the next district. My problem is that I don't know how to do it. 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 So, uh, at the beginning, there is more challenge for us actually. Yes, before we came, the road is cut off by water. Most of our places it plan earlier. Yeah, and our machine, uh, and uh, even the vehicle can't go through the park, can't go through, check the route. The purpose of making the roads climate resilient is to enable them connect the district for the reasons of providing access to markets for the farmers. As in component one, the communities are participating in various activities that are producing livestock and other agricultural produce. We were cut off from here to Iteshitesh because this Bachele bridge was damaged every time. So when it is raining, we are not able to pass. The direct link for my business is easement of moving from my farm to the market point of my town. I was taking one hour. This time I'm driving 15 to 20 minutes, I'm in town. I can go five times in a day, delivering my goods. Aside from the farmers, there are also the tourists who will be benefiting from this climate-resilient road. We are now seeing, you know, an increase in the numbers of tourists coming to the park. Uh, before this road was, was, was put in place, I mean, it was difficult to access the southern part of KNP. But now this road has really opened up, you know, uh, this vast wilderness. So now we are able to have kind of, you know, uh, a year-round tourism season. What really makes this road climate resilient are the special features embedded in the design the embankment, where the road is passing through flood-prone areas. The road has been raised to as high as three meters. 
top soil is put back on the sides in order to allow for vegetation to grow and hold the soil together. In some areas where they have done the culverts, they have done some stone pitching. It has only been done in vulnerable areas that have a lot of movement of water. This design compacts and prevents erosion of the road. The culverts. The size and number of culverts used are dependent on the severity of the flood in an area. Culverts as big as 2.4 by 2.4 meters have been used in some cases. The flood should never be allowed to overtop the road, lest it damages it. Another feature that speaks to climate change is the borrow pit. In the process of constructing the road, gravel or sand is obtained from some place and delivered to the construction site. This is the result, a borrow pit. Ideally, the pit has to be restored after extraction to make the environment safe. Yeah, we restored it because the people is worried about the, you know, during the rain season, the people like the, the dam. Yeah, then after rain season, then the, the animal and the, the, the field, they need the water. So people request us, leave the bar pit, you just make the, 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 <coughs> the bank just uh, uh, gentle. Company ne pangam mi kwa kwa e iru tu sile ka kari na kuza kuzanto kuli sali komu kwa kuyo nuse zamez eh eh so kala ne ku ne rufu mananga ma difficulties hasinwa shemi waruna ne vayanga kwa hule fa kuli zio nwa mez hmm ne ri distance but as in fact, we play kari re ku ku rati ani ba 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 pangezi mi kwa kwa ba ba tu sile hule. Despite being a gravel road, the climate resilient road boasts of appropriate road signs and features. With the special features in place, it is expected that the climate resilient road will be able to keep families, communities, and districts linked for many more years. The total length of Link 1 is 73 kilometers from the T1 junction in Kalomo to Dundumwenzi Gate of the National Park. On this link, works are still ongoing. The works on Link 1 should have started from the Livingstone T junction, but the contractor had to start from the bridge. This is because the area from the bridge going to the T-junction is residential and has a lot of activities. There may be need for the communities to be shifted in order to clear the way for the contractor to do the works. And so these um, decisions needed to be made in order for the contractor to really commence works on that street. That's why it was skipped. And then, but it's also part of um, the, the, the stretch that has to be worked on. Much more works still remain to be done on Link 1. This portion was commenced much later, owing to flooding in the Kafue National Park. Despite the delays, the contractor is determined to complete the works on schedule. Link 2 runs from Dundumwezi Gate to Ngoma headquarters of the Kafue National Park. Currently, progress is about 80%. And uh, the total length now is 104 kilometers. Link 3 has a total distance of 19.3 kilometers. Four borrow pits were created in the National Park. They have since been restored. A total of 36 culverts were installed. In terms of embankment, this road was raised to almost one meter. Link 3 stretches from Goma headquarters up to Itejiteji town 
at the Sino Hydro Power Station. This section is almost done. Road signs fitted. This makes driving in the park safer for both motorists and the wildlife. Yeah, I think for actually we have been done. Now we will be started the maintenance. The total length falling for is 40, 48 kilometers. And for the embankment, there we get four or three points to rise the road. The strengthening climate resilience in the Kafue Sub Basin project, Skrika, is expected to foster food security, sustainable growth, and poverty reduction by strengthening the adaptive capacity of 800,000 rural communities in the Kafue Sub Basin. Actually, this road uh, cuts across all the five pillars of the Seventh National Development Plan. If we take the first pillar, which talks about economic diversification and uh, job creation, it has got a result area of export-oriented agriculture and other economic activities. Uh, through that pillar, we've, we've seen where the people around here can, are able to export their agriculture produce and their fish harvest, which translates into the outcomes of the other pillars like poverty reduction and vulnerability and the enhancing development. We had problems of service delivery in this area due to the very bad road. Now that the road has been worked on, we are able to provide boreholes and other developmental issues through, through this road. Yeah, the difference that we've seen is great because we are able to uh, call an ambulance at any time and it comes as fast as we need it. Then the other, the other improvement is that uh, those my home deliveries, they are not all that as before. So there is great improvement because people are able to come first to the clinic. This road has brought so many social activities to the district. It has created employment to the locals, especially the youths. <laughs> As in any new project, not everyone receives the project well. <laughs> Kambo <laughs>
Yes, it has brought a lot actually. We, we are able to go to the station. We don't spend the night there and come back. Uh, though it is only 48 kilometers or 40 from these areas to the station in the past, uh, the road was very bad. Sometimes it could be uh, these bridges, there are two or three bridges which would be affected. During the rain season, you find we are cut off. Uh, and just the speed of vehicles was affected. Sometimes you would leave the main road, you go divert there and here. But this time we just take about 20 minutes from here. We are in the bomber. And then we are back. So uh, that is actually what, what we have benefited. Also the, the, the rates. It, this road used to cost about 120 kwacha from Itachitachi to Namwara. But because of, of the, the road, it is now somewhere around 60 kwacha, which is 50% reduction in, in bus fares. Yes, we, the two districts actually are, are sister districts in Namwara and Itachitachi. But we, we get cut off by by this river it has separated. So during the rain season, you find that we don't have uh, much contact with each other. Uh, even if there is a pontoon, it, it doesn't move from here up to the bomber. It is just uh, getting people from here up to there. So when the plane is flooded, we have to find our own means to, to get to the bomber, mainly using speedboats. And those are also risky and they can't carry and uh, cargo. Indeed, the impact of the climate resilient road on the lives of the people in the Kafue sub basin is apparent. Yeah. Uh, to help us on this same road, this China state should not leave in two years' time. They must stay here and observe the road for five years or more. If they find the road was not fixed in good condition, they must redo the road until they reach on that level, they, they, on that level of putting the tarmac, which will have a guarantee of more years. The budget, $17.9 million. The result, a stretch of about 240 kilometers of climate resilient roads. Very cost effective, yet serves a very important purpose providing access, even in the face of climate change, even in the face of flooding. This is a pilot project that can be replicated in other areas. It can save government huge amounts of money when it comes to building feeder roads in rural areas. <laughs>